Okay, today we're going to be looking at something called molar mass and how we use it as a conversion factor. And the question that we want to ask is, what is a formula? What does it tell us about a compound? Here's our buddy, water. I keep using this guy. What this formula tells us is that we have hydrogen and in one molecule of hydrogen there are I'm sorry one molecule of water there are two atoms this is called a subscript and it is just a small number that tells us how many of each type of atom we have in a compound so I mean we know the name of this is dihydrogen monoxide and right there in the name it tells you that in a molecule of water there are two hydrogens and one oxygen this scales up so if we know that one molecule of water has two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen this scales up to moles and so if we had a mole of water molecules that means that we would have two moles of hydrogen atoms and one mole of oxygen atoms so what we're going to be looking at today is something called molar mass and let's take a look at uh, these these two elements and I'll show you what we're talking about so way back in the beginning of the year looking at our periodic table and we said that every element has got two numbers the first number we said was called the atomic number and we said that is simply the number of protons an element has and so we know hydrogen's got one we know oxygen's got eight we also said that each element has a second number what we call the atomic mass it is as we remember the sum of the protons and neutrons but we also use the name molar mass which is the mass in grams of one mole of this particular element and let's remember that one mole of anything is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of that thing so if you had 16 grams of oxygen you have a moles worth 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen it works with molecules too so if i was going to ask you to give me the molar mass of a molecule of water we know that there are two hydrogen atoms and that they each have a molar mass now notice how these are big long numbers we're going to round to the nearest whole number just to make it easier so if I was going to ask you for the molar mass of hydrogen you would simply say one gram the molar mass of oxygen we would just say 16 grams so if you got two hydrogen atoms and they're each one gram that means two hydrogen atoms have a molar mass of two grams it takes two grams to have a mole of two atoms of hydrogen what we call molecular hydrogen if you have a mole of oxygen that's 16 grams well in a mole a molecule of water you have one oxygen and that has a mass of 16 grams so if you wanted to find out what mass of water molecules you needed you get two grams from the hydrogen 16 grams from the oxygen 18 grams is the mass of one mole of water so we're going to call this molar mass of a formula and you'll hear me use the terms and they are interchangeable you'll hear me use the terms molar mass and you'll hear me use the terms formula mass and believe me 
they are interchangeable. So let's try a couple of these. Let's say I was going to ask you for the molar mass of a molecule like carbon dioxide. Now you all have a periodic table, and so you all know how to look these up. I'm not going to show you. You know where to look. Carbon has a molar mass of 12 grams. We're rounding to the nearest whole number. And oxygen, as we've already shown, has a molar mass of 16 grams, and there are two of them. So what's our total molar mass? 12 grams from the carbon plus 2 times 16 is 32. The molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44 grams. What if we had something like a polyatomic ion? What if we had something like, oh, I don't know. Here's an ionic compound. It's called calcium nitrate. You guys know how these work because you know that ionic compounds don't use prefixes, but they often involve what we call polyatomic ions like nitrate. So, how are we going to do this? Well, we know calcium has got a molar mass of 40 grams. The nitrate, we could do this a couple ways. We can say that we have two atoms of nitrogen and 2 times 3 is 6 atoms of oxygen. Or, we could simply add up the mass of one nitrate and multiply that by two. I'm going to do it that way because I know nitrogen is 14 grams and oxygen is four, is a 16 grams and there are three of them in a nitrate. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all that and multiply by two because this subscript tells us that we have two of them. So three times 16 is 48 plus 14 is 62 and so we're going to multiply that by 2, and so all of our nitrates together are a mass of 124 uh, grams for our nitrates, right? 48, 3 times 16 plus 14 is 62, right? And then multiply that by 2 is 124. So what's the molar mass of calcium nitrate? 124 plus 40. 164 grams. And that is all you do. What if we had a big clunky one, one that looked like this? This is called aluminum carbonate, and it looks like this. So when you're doing this, it might be a good idea to count up how many of each atom you have. And there's a couple ways that we can do this. I mean, we know from this subscript that we have two aluminums, and they're each 27 grams. So multiplying 27 by 2 is 54. You could find the mass of everything in the carbonate and then multiply it by 3. Or you could say, well, because there are three carbonates, that gives us three carbons and nine oxygens. And you get the same answer either way. Let's do it that this second way. So we have three carbons, and they're each 12 grams, so that's 36. And we have nine oxygens, excuse me. And they're each 16 grams. And I want to do this in my head. And I don't happen to have a calculator, but here's a quick way to do it. If you know 1 oxygen is 16 and 10 oxygens is 160, then just subtracting uh, 16 from 160 gives you 9 times 16, which should be 144 grams. Now, if you want to double check that on a calculator, I'm going to do that right now. 9 times 16 is 144. So we're going to add all these up, and that gives us the molar mass of aluminum carbonate, 54 plus 36 plus 144, and you get 234 grams. And you might see that someone says 234 grams per mole because that's the molar mass, the mass of one mole of this particular molecule. Now, how are we going to use this? So here's how we are going to use this thing called molar mass. And here's an old friend you might remember. This is called the Molar Mass Quick Reference Guide. And we're going to change it a little bit because all of these say 
atoms, but we're going to change it a little bit so that these now say, let me make this pen a little bit smaller so you can read what I'm writing. We're going to change this so that these now say molecules, but it works exactly the same way. So make sure that you have this, and I'm going to show you how we do this. All right. So let's take our old buddy. Let's take our molecule of water. And we've been using this for quite a bit. We know that it has a molar mass of 18 grams. How are we going to use this? So here is a type of question that you could expect me to ask you. So here's a question you could expect me to ask. What mass of water would you have if you had 5 moles of water? Let's take our molar conversion guide and put it right here so that we have it. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and remember that this works for atoms or molecules. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, we are trying to find mass. They gave us moles. That means we're going from moles to mass. And that means we're going to need this conversion factor. So how many grams of our buddy water would be 5 moles if we know the molar mass in 1 mole is 18 grams. Got that right up there. Notice how this part of the conversion looks just like this part. And now all I have to do is bust out my calculator, multiply across the top, divide by the bottom. And we should get 5 times 18 divided by 1 is 90 grams of H2O. What if I was going to ask you to go the other way? In this case, we're going to go the other way. Instead of going from moles to mass, we're going to go from moles to molecules. And you're going to want a couple of tools here. You're going to want your molar conversion guide, and you're also going to need a calculator, and you're going to need to remember how to enter exponents. And we'll do a quick little refresh of that here. But let's set this up first. So this time, we're going to be using moles to in this case, molecules, not atoms, but it works exactly the same way. So let's set this up. We're going to ask how many, let me make this a little bit smaller so that when I write this, you can actually read what I'm doing. We're going to say how many molecules of H2O are we talking about if we have five moles? And we know, according to what this conversion factor, we're going from moles to atoms. So we're going to have, actually, not that one. We want this one, the one on the bottom, not this one. I'm going this way. I'm following moles to atoms, so we're following this one. So in one mole, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Let's enter this into the calculator, and here's what we get. We're going to say 5 times the number of molecules in a mole. 6.02. I'm going to hit second exponent entry, 23rd, and then I'm going to divide all that by 1. I don't really need to do that, but I'm going to anyway, just for solidarity. My answer, 3.01. Feel free to round. 3 times 10 to the 24th molecules of H2O.